everyone. So today I am out here in my yard collecting some pine resin. Now what you can do with this is uh, you can make glues, you can get turpentine from it, uh, you can make some great fire starters, and you can also make violin rosin with this. Now, I do live in a city, so um, getting out and collecting stuff is really difficult. But um, I just thought I'd share this with you and just collecting it all up, putting it in the pan where I will cook it down and melt it and purify it and hopefully we'll get some good stuff out of this. But uh, I just want to let you know that spring is a great time to do this because all the resin is really soft. You can see how easy I can just press that down. The tree saps are all flowing, you know, bringing new life. Spring is awesome for that. So um, that's what I'm doing today. And uh, we'll be back with other videos later on and show you how I further this process along. And as you can see, I ended up getting a whole lot of tree pitch. Now all of this great harvest is going to be used to be rendered down and make some violin rosin out of, but also the debris and stuff are going to make awesome fatwood. It's definitely an outside activity. As you can see, it's very smoky. So I don't want all of that going into my house. It's a little windy out, so um, that does kind of help keep the smoke and stuff out of my face. But if you have allergies or anything like that, you might want to stay away from doing this. Now I have decided I was going to use a hot plate instead of using it over an open fire. Reason for that is this is extremely flammable. Sometimes the flames come up over the edge of the pot, catch the whole thing on fire, and I really don't want a fireball or anything like that to deal with. I just, <laughs> I'm gonna use this stuff, not, uh, not burn myself on it. So um, one of the ways you can extract turpentine is get a metal pipe and stick it at an angle on the edge of your pot. Now you'll wanna cover your pot with um, aluminum foil, something that's gonna seal in the vapors. Now what's gonna happen is those vapors are gonna come up and into that pipe and then create condensation. And that will come out as the turpentine, which you can collect in another can like this uh, if you wanted to. But again, that's not something I'm trying to do today. Now I will need to strain this off. I've got two different kinds of strainers ready to go. I've got this one that I picked up at the dollar store. It's kind of a, a larger strain. So this is gonna catch all the really big stuff. And as you can tell, I got a lot of big stuff in there. And uh, this little one is going to be used to catch the more little stuff. So that's gonna be very a fine strain. So we'll get a cleaner catch for that. And uh, this is already getting kind of heavy. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to strain this off. Very, very carefully, mind you, because this is still very hot. I'm gonna give that a quick stir around. See all the sludge and slurry. Then we're gonna try and make some pebble-sized uh, starters that I can just quickly light, and they'll burn for a little while, hopefully catch any wet or uh, really cold timber on fire. So that's the purpose of the fat wood, anyway, that I'm gonna use it for. All right, that's good. Now typically I do kind of want it to all finish bubbling up, but I'm still gonna have to strain it a couple times, so I'm not gonna worry about that quite yet. So, moving stuff around, I'll set this over here, back there, I'm gonna throw that in there. Gonna have pot handy because this is going to be really, really hot. I think I'm going to put on a leather glove. That will probably protect my hand a little better. All right. Safety first as always. I'm just going to very carefully strain that off. And yeah, this is very, very hot. Now 
That's just beautiful. Look at it. Beautiful amber color. Go ahead and take that and kind of stir it around. And this stuff is what we're going to pebble up. I'm just going to let that cool off just a little bit. Got another pan handy. Just going to put the sludge in that. Get it done dripping off. It's mostly done dripping off. All right. Put that in there. Let that cool a little bit. Come back to my pot and strain off the rest of this. just beautiful. All right. Throwing some more pitch in there in the pot. Hopefully that will start getting melting. And One of the great ways of cleaning up tree pitch is using vodka or you can use nail polish remover. So that's wonderful. I go ahead and give that a stir. All right, that's that for right now. I'm going to put that sludge right next to the pot right here, just like that. That aside a minute. There we go. So we're getting some good, getting some good stuff going on now. Just gonna go ahead and stick that back in there. Woo! It's some work, but uh, it's worth it. It's gonna be some beautiful stuff. I'm really happy with that. Okay. This stuff. I'll just make small little balls with it. It's still pretty hot. I'll let that cool just a little bit more. I'm so glad I wore good leather gloves because that tends to protect my hands just a little bit more. All right. Cool. So when that cools off just a little bit more, I'm going to get some more use out of this. I did have to let this cool off by quite a bit, but um, this is starting to work really well now. So here I've got a nice chunk. I can break it into two. It's kind of a little bit difficult, but it's still possible. And just roll it up in my hands and make a fireball just like that. So take it a little bit in my hands, roll it, and put it in my pan. And these will stay like that as long as they don't get like really, really hot or anything like that. So I'm going to take a little bit more and roll it up just like so and put it in my pot. Now when this starts getting really, really hard, uh, because this does still have tree pitch in it, I can set this pan right back on my burner right there, stove top cooker. Breaking this up into pieces is really difficult sometimes. Pull that up, put it in there, roll that up, put that in there. So there's really nothing to it, really. So there I go. So there's a reason why I use cheap old pans for this. Um, <laughs> as you can tell, it's really messy. So, um, don't use good pans for this kind of stuff. I don't know if you'll be able to get it entirely clean to, like, new cooking fashion. And that, I think I can break up. Nah, eh, that'll work. Alright, so that's kind of how I'm making the fireballs. 
We'll be back after I get this all completely done. I still have more to go, more resin to clean up. <sighs> and uh, still got a ways to go yet. Hi there, everyone. So we're doing the last of this video. So um, I got the firewood fat ball fire starters done. This is from the debris off the tree pitch that we rendered. This is the resin, so it's kind of thick. I got a good supply. All of this is flammable. So I can use this for emergency fire starting on cold days or whatever else I need to do. Let me show you the clarity on this resin. All right, I'm gonna hold it up to the light. It's kind of a cloudy day. And uh, this is what I've got. It is just beautiful stuff. It's gorgeous. You can see my fingers right there, right through it. And for being as thick as it is, it's kind of cool. So I just wanted to show you guys, this is easy stuff you can do for yourself, tried and true methods. And if you like this video, come back for more. And yeah, I'll show you how to do other things that you can do right at home for yourself. Have a good one, everyone. And we'll see you later. Bye now.